And why did the boat sail without him? And why was he not realised he was missing? There was a wall of silence there. Nothing really seemed quite right. Nothing seemed to fit. A little bit of a mystery. Alan Addis was just 19 when he vanished in 1980. The police believe his disappearance may be a criminal matter. There are good grounds to suspect Addis was murdered. The Falkland Islands is not a crime place. People don't really commit heavy crimes here like someone disappearing. I spent days searching, and it's possible that I missed the body by a metre. It's basically disappeared off the face of the earth, didn't they? And there's people out there who know who've done it, the bloke who's done it, knows he's done it. It's my son, and I want him home. Royal Marines, Royal Marine family, we couldn't give Anne anything that she wanted. We certainly couldn't give her a boy back. But the body was still there. Just a matter of finding it. Alan Addis was just 19 when he disappeared from the Falkland Islands. It was 1980, two years before the conflict that would make the islands world famous. Only 4,700 square miles and around 1,800 people. And yet, no one could recall when Marine Addis was last seen after a party in North Arm, a small settlement on East Falkland. Several searches have been carried out since, and rumours of his story have spread wide. But for 38 years, no one has been charged, and his body has never been found. We've done everything together. Certainly, people used to think we were brothers when we were younger, just spent a lot of time together. Climbing trees and building boats and yeah, we had a we had a great childhood, we really did. We learned to drive at 13. <laughs> Alan was part of my family and I was part of his. Alan Addis was born on the 14th of July, 1961. He grew up in Croydon in South London, but moved to Catford when he was eight. New kid started and I was told to go and Show him, where, show him around and show him where to pay his dinner money, etc. And that was it. We were firm friends from that day. We just sort of clicked. We used to go and train spot at Croydon Station all day, every day. Yeah. Catching train numbers. Yeah. Alan um, loved it. Yeah, he was a train spotter. Yeah. Mm. He thoroughly enjoyed it. We had picnics in the garden in the summer. Took us all over the place, places that we'd never been to. Mm -hmm. It was nice, wasn't it? At the age of 17, he decided to join Happy the Royal Marines. As an only child, this decision was a tough one for his late mother, Anne. Was he very attached to Anne, would you say? Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. I think they'd been through the wars together. Mm. I think that's why she didn't want him to join the Marines, did she, really? Yeah. No. She lived for him, really, you can say, didn't she? Yeah. But then he decided he wanted to go a bit further, I think, don't you? Yes. Anne even wrote a book about Alan's disappearance and her desperate search. In it, she writes about his decision to join the forces. I was going to miss him so much, but I put on a good face, all the time hoping and thinking he may change his mind. The bond was enormous. Um, I think Anne and Alan's father split up when Alan was quite young. Through them stages of Anne's life, Alan became more and more protective of Anne. Certainly, Alan was the apple of Anne's eye. Her whole world revolved around Alan because that is all she had. I just remember the last thing I think I remember of him is his birthday, when he was 18. Mm -hmm. I think that's the last time I perhaps saw him. I don't know, we were all together there, weren't we? Mm -hmm. Laughing birthday. and joking, mm -hmm. yeah. tormenting. Yeah. yeah. He was good at cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a well-liked lad. 
He was a pleasure to be with. Just very, very sad. In the Falklands, Alan was part of a 50-strong detachment known as Naval Party 8901, the only military presence on the islands. You come through the narrows into the, into the harbour and suddenly all these gaily painted houses come into view and peat smoke was hanging over it at the time, I remember that as well. And an absolute stillness and quietness. You know, there were no car horns, no sirens, no... They were just totally silent. And that's the first impressions I got. We never heard of the Falklands, had we? No. Any of us? No. Dad had never heard of him, had they? No. It was just somewhere a long way away, wasn't it? Mm. It certainly wasn't Hull, girls, was it? Mm. It certainly wasn't Hull. And you're, you're sitting there and thinking, well, this is it now. This is it for 12 months. You know, We have to make do with what we've got. We have to rely on each other even more than we would normally. And let's get on with it, really. It's, yeah. um, I mean, the Falkland Islanders were fantastic. And, and I stand by Falkland Islanders any day of the week. Um, they immediately took us into their homes, their hearts. We were, their, we were their Royal Marines. But life 8,000 miles away from the UK could be difficult and somewhat isolated. She once sent him a half, birthday, a, half okay. a dozen eggs. In a brown box. <laughs> in its carton, expecting it to get all the way to the Falklands. Because they were short of eggs. <laughs> and he sent her back. Never forget that. And he sent her run back. Oh dear. <laughs> said, don't send anything else, Mother, you're wasting your money. <laughs> but she still did. Of course she did. You'd do anything. Send anything. <laughs> As the months go by, Alan started to feel the pressure of living in a remote community. On the 12th of June, 1980, he wrote to his mother. Still haven't had a drink or an egg. Still haven't watched telly, listened to Radio One, been on a train, gone to a disco, gone to a wimpy bar, or read a paper the day it was published. Haven't had milk either. Haven't been in a taxi or a bus. I could carry this on all night. It's great. As any other Marine, he would look for any excuse to get out of the usual routine at Moody Brook Barracks near Stanley. Only tomorrow to crack and I'm off sailing to Fitzroy. It should be a laugh. We'll write again in two weeks when I get back. Bye for now. Love, Alan. That would be the last contact she'd ever have with her son. We had a, a small trawler type vessel. We would regularly use that if we were taking stores out to various islands and things like that. So the good old MV Forest, it was our way of, another way of getting around rather than having to go yomping. The mission was to get to Fitzroy, another settlement on East Falkland to train local volunteers. However, their team would have to first travel from Stanley to North Arm to collect weapons and three other Marines. All six planned to spend the night there before leaving the following morning. It, I didn't go on the trip. Um, a, another section was going to do the trip. And Alan said to me before we left, if I can get a replacement, can I go? And I said, yes, but you do need to get the replacement because there was a lot of work to be done while I was away. And, and, and that's what he done. And that's how Alan ended up heading out on that trip. Did he say why he wanted to go? I think he just wanted to get out for a couple, you know. It's, you know, most people do want to get out and explore. It's, for a Royal Marine, it's second nature. So on the 7th of August, 1980, in the middle of winter, Marine Addis was on his way to North Arm with two Marines from another section. According to exclusive police documents never seen before, Alan is left on the ship as he's feeling seasick. The other two Marines go and help pack up the weapons, but soon come back have dinner with the ship's crew and get ready for a night out at North Arm's only entertainment offering, the Social Club. And as always, when we go out to these places, each settlement has its own clubhouse. And invariably there is a night, at least, if not several, 
uh, where that clubhouse will be open and all the people from the settlement will come in to meet you and, and you know, we've played arts and dongs and stuff and um, have a small libation. At eight o'clock that night, the three Marines join the locals and the rest of the team at the social club. They have the rod games and what have you in, in the club, but nothing, I would say, untoward. They're normally a very, very good crowd of people. According to witness statements, that evening, Alan became involved in an argument with one of the residents. Just after 11 p.m., the two other Marines left the club to return to the MV Forest. They can't see Alan, but they assume that he might have been invited to someone's home. Police have tried to establish what happened later that night, but witness statements seen by Forces News show that many of those at the social club recalled events differently. There was no common agreement on when Alan was last seen. Why did the boat sail without him? And why was he not realised he was missing? But does it not strike you as a coincidence that someone coming to give evidence should happen to die in very unfortunate circumstances? No, if he was very drunk. There are good grounds to suspect Addis was murdered. It's basically disappeared off the face of the earth, didn't he? 